Number 43, letter A. Find the electric field at five centimeters in figure A, given that Q is equal to one uh, micro coulomb. All right, so here's uh, figure A. Right here I'm putting in the dot is gonna be uh, X is equal to five centimeters, and we're gonna find the electric field. So we've done problems like this, right? Let's do, uh, let's call this, you know, uh, let's call this number one, charge number one, this will be charge number two, and this will be charge number three. So we're gonna think about the electric fields produced by each at this point. So this is a positive charge, therefore, remember, electric field lines emanate away from positive charges, therefore, this vector for the electric field will be pointing to the right. So we'll label that E1. The one in red is negative, and you know electric field lines point towards, right, the negative charge. So therefore, at this particular point, that electric field will be pointing also uh, to the right. Uh, did I say left before? I don't even know, but this is do, uh, do as I do, not as I say. Okay, so E is equal to, uh, this is going to be uh, electric field line for two, and then how about for three? The electric field line for three, it's positive, you know, uh, positives emanate away, so therefore it's going to be a net vector pointing to the left. Okay, that's going to be E3. So now what we got to do is figure out the total, right? So basically E1 is positive, because it's pointing to the right, plus then E2, because that's pointing to the right, minus then E3, because that's pointing to the left. And that should all be equal to the total electric field. We'll just call it E sub, you know, E, E total. Let's just calculate it all, right? So now we can substitute on in our formula, KQ of R squared. So I'm just going to pull out a common K here uh, between everything, right? Because each of these will have a K within it. So I'll just pull that out. And this is basically going to be Q1 now, right? The charge of 1. So the it's just going to be equal to Q. And they told us Q is 1 micro coulomb. So this is just 1 times 10 to the minus 6 micro coulombs, all divided by the distance between Q1 and that point of interest. So it looks like 2 centimeters, right? So it's going to be 0 0.02 squared plus then... E2, right, um, and that's produced by Q2, and that's negative, but don't worry, remember, it's always absolute value, so just plug in the magnitude. So that's going to be 2 times Q, and essentially it's going to be 2 times 10 to the minus 6, divided by the distance between the second charge and the point of interest, and that looks like it's going to be 3 centimeters, right? So 0 0.03 squared, and then minus now E3, so that's going to be, a, has a Q value of 1, basically. So 1 times 10 to the minus 6, divided by then the distance. So it looks like 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. 6 units away, 0 0.06 squared. And that's going to be equal to the total. And now, just plug it on in. Remember, K is 8.99 times 10 to the 9th. So let's see. 8 point, oops, 8.99 times 10 to the 9th. Multiplied by now, parenthesis, 1 times 10 to the minus 6, divided by 0 0.02 squared plus 2 times 10 to the minus 6 divided by 0 0.03 squared, minus 1 times 10 to the minus 6 divided by 0 0.06 squared. And what do we get? We have a value of about 3.99, so I guess 4, right? So we get a value of about 4.00 times 10 raised to the, what do we got? 3, 6, 7, all right? Newtons per coulomb, those are the units of electric field. All right, that's the total. That's the answer for part A, okay? Let's just move this stuff on out of the way. Move it on over to here. Let me also move this too so I have a little more space. And letter A. Letter B. At what position between three and eight centimeters is the total electric field the same as that for negative two Q alone? Uh, sure. So, um, all right. Let's erase all this, okay? Um. So now basically what we what we need to do here is um, yeah this is a little this is a little complicated so we're trying to say let, let's just let's just take the words and see what okay so at what position between three and eight centimeters okay is the total electric field the same as that for negative two q alone so they're telling us look between neg three centimeters and eight centimeters what position along this continuum right. So why don't, do you know where it is? I don't know where it is. So why don't we just choose a random point here, okay? Now, since I don't know the distance, I'm going to call this x. But the question is like, what do I call x, right? Do I call x this, this whole thing? Do I call this x? Do I call this x? Do I call that x? What I'm going to do is I'm going to choose my x in reference off of this q, okay? q1, basically. 
And the reason why I'm going to do that is because I know the total distance, basically, between this Q, positive Q, and all the way to that positive Q on the other end, right? How many units is there? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So we know that it's eight centimeters apart. Because I know I'm going to need this in meters, let's just convert it all right now. So basically, what, I, what they're saying is where is the... They, they want us to find this particular point where the total electric field, okay, the total electric field at this particular point is the same, equal to the electric field of just negative 2Q alone. So it's equal to the electric field of Q of the second charge, basically, right? And we'll call this again charge number one, charge number two, and charge number three, okay? So let's take it one piece at a time. So the total electric field at this point, let's look at it each uh, separately. Remember, there's gonna there's three charges, and each of those charges are producing an electric field at this point, so we're going to look at them individually. So what's the electric field like at this point produced by the positive Q? Well, remember, electric field lines always point away from the positive charges, so we know we're going to have a vector pointing to the right, okay, produced by the first charge. So I know that that's positive, right? So I'm going to write now E1. Positive. You can put a little positive up there if you like. You don't have to. Now, what about E2, right? The electric field produced by this second charge. Well, remember, it's negative. It says it right here, and it always points toward the negative. So again, it's actually going to be pointing, and relative to this point, it's going to be pointing to the right. That's also positive. So plus E2. Actually, let me just backtrack. Plus E2. And then, what about the third one? Well, the third one, the electric field lines always emanate from the positive up, so it's going to the left, so this is going to be minus E, uh, what are we at? Uh, E3, sorry. Cool. And now, uh, basically, if you notice, right, I mean, the setup here is exactly identical to what we did over here. Why? Well, because they had us find it at 5 before. Now it's some point in between, so it's basically going to be the same signs, all right? That should then be equal to E2 at this point. They might say, that just sounds strange. Do the, e's, do the E2 cancel? Uh, yeah, they do. All right? They definitely do. Because the electric field produced at this point by the second charge is the same no matter whether it's on the left side of the equation or the right side of the equation. So they will cancel, right? You can subtract the E2 on over if you wanted. And you'll notice they just cancel, right? Now, don't cancel it to 1, right? It goes to 0. It's not a division. It's a subtraction. So this is basically going to be E1 minus E3 is equal to then zero. And we realize now that E1 is equal to E3. Huh, look at that, all right? So let's just, I'm gonna need more space, so I just gotta erase that, so we'll bring this on up. Cool, now, let's expand on the electric fields. Remember, I'm gonna use my formula again, okay? K times Q1 over R1 squared is gonna be equal to K times Q2 over R2 squared. What do you notice about the Ks? They go bye-bye. What about the Q? Well, Q1 is what value? Q. What's Q2? Excuse me. Uh, well, actually, you know what I should have said down here? Sorry, guys. I should have plugged in a little over here. I should have plugged in a 3, right? Because technically it's Q, you know, it's Q3 because it's the electric field produced by 3. So what is the charge of Q3? Well, it's also Q. So what happens to the Qs? See you later. See you later. And what does this thing hold now reduced down to? Oh my goodness, it just reduces down to 1 over R1 squared equals 1 over R2 squared, right? So now let's expand on the R1 and the R2. So where is R1 in this picture? Well, R1 is going to be the distance from charge 1 to the point of interest. That's R1. What's that known as? What's known in the picture as literally x. So plug in x. Don't forget to square it. That's then equal to 1 over now. Well, what's R2? Well, in your picture up here, where is R2? Well, R2 is this distance between the point of interest. I keep saying R2. Sorry, guys. That's because I wrote it. You know I meant 3. All right, so what's the distance of R3? Well, it's the, it's the distance between the point of interest and the third charge. So what's that? Well, if you know the total is 0 0.08, and you know this is not part of it, you've got to subtract x from that, the point 0.08, right? So that's basically what, basically what it works out to. So this is 0 0.08, right, minus then x, and that whole thing squared. Now we just got to solve for x, right? You can cross multiply, or you could just flip, flip these two fractions. So we realize now when we do that, it's just going to simply be x squared over 0 0.8, excuse me, 0 0.08 minus x, and this whole thing now squared. 
expand on the right hand side and we realize right when we foil it on out it's going to be zero point what is that zero zero six four right point oh eight i probably did that wrong no yeah, point zero zero six four there we go minus then zero point uh what do we got one six right times yeah one six x and then that's going to be minus then x squared oh no plus x squared what am i talking about plus x squared cool now what he knows about the x squares right you could subtract them on across they go bye bye and now i'm going to try to solve this thing for x so i got 0 0.0064 is equal to 0 0.16 x divide out the 0.16 and what do we get we're going to get divide by 0.16 i'm going to get 0 0.04 what does that represent? 0.04 represents x, and that is in meters. In other words, it's equivalent to 4 centimeters, right? So that x value I found is going to be 4 centimeters. So basically now, let's clear this up at the top. So remember, I called this little thing in here. I said, I don't know where it is, but it's going to be equal. This is x, but now I know exactly where it is. It's 4 centimeters, right, that distance. So now it's going to be exactly, what do we got? Right there. Right? This is now four centimeters. Okay, so uh, at what position? This position, four centimeters east of Q1, if you wanted, or seven, uh, a location of seven centimeters, right, relative to the origin. Doesn't matter. They're both the same thing. Cool. All right, great. So we're almost halfway done with the problem. <laughs> Letter C. Can the electric field be zero anywhere between zero and eight centimeters? So meaning anywhere between uh, these, uh, you know, two points, basically. Well, what we realize is that, um, you know, th this is the point where the electric fields will be equal, where it's, it's not zero, it's just equal to the same thing as just uh, negative two by itself. So it's definitely not zero here, right? What you can do here is, I mean, I can kind of see it visually, but what you would want to do is you'd want to test the extremes more or less right also think about what happens as this you know uh, dot let's say moves where at x is equal to seven what happens as the dot moves further and further to the left well if the dot were to be here right the electric field pointing by that is pointing that way okay and then what happens with this one well it's pointing in the opposite direction and then we have basically the negative two taking on over right so it's pointing to the right so there's definitely going to be no place in the middle between those two where it will be zero. What you'd want to actually check probably is just do find the electric field at zero. I'm not going to do that because, uh, you know, you guys can definitely uh, practice that, right? See what it is. Um, uh, we don't really even need to necessarily do it. Uh, but what would the vectors look like here? Well, it would point away this way for Q. And then this Q would also point away. Right? And then this negative Q would be pointing to this direction. So if you notice here, right, sometime either you want to check this point, maybe check that point, and then see what the electric field looks like. You know, you got two vectors to the left and one to the right. By no means does that mean that this thing will sum up to be negative at all. They got to be perfectly balanced, right, around that particular point. So just knowing, you know, the distances being squared and knowing the magnitudes here, there's no way that uh, this thing will be zero. Okay, and like I said, you can do a couple of, couple of uh, test points there for yourself. So letter C is gonna be, the answer is no. Letter D, at very large positive or negative values of X, uh, the electric field approaches zero in both letter A and letter B, in which does it most rapidly approach zero and why? Um, so if we were to take a look now at both of these two problems, you know, you basically wanna take a look at the aggregate or the aggregated charge. You got a positive Q, positive Q, and two negative Qs, so this whole top is going to be neutral. Here, down here, right, you're going to have a positive three, and we took a look at this on the last problem. Positive three, negative two, and a negative one. They cancel each other out, but then we have a net positive, right? So essentially, down here, there's a net positive charge, and up here, it's neutral. All right, so overall, as we move further and further out, we're going to approach uh, zero. A, an electric field of zero faster where there is no charge, okay? Right, because I mean, if you just look at the formula, E is equal to, it's a function of then, right, the charge. So if there is a charge, E is greater. And if there is no charge, it gets right, smaller, or it's zero, essentially. So, yeah, uh, so what's the answer? A, so letter D is gonna be A. 
And then letter E. At what position to the right of 11 centimeters is the total electric field zero, other than infinity? So basically what we would have to do for E is, you know, just, again, it's the same idea. You got to pick, it doesn't matter, pick this random point, right? Doesn't really matter. Use this distance. You could totally do this in a whole bunch of ways. I like to use this distance. I'm going to start it at x is equal to 3, basically. And I know that this total distance is the same thing, 0 0.08 meters. And then I'm going to call this little unknown piece x. So what are we going to do? We're going to set it up exactly how we did letter b, basically, right? we got to find the total electric field, but this time we know that the total electric field is going to equal 0. So letter E, we know that the total electric field, because that's what they're asking for, better equal zero there. Well, first of all, will it, right? Let's just check, let's just check the uh, vectors. So let's call this number one, this number two, and this number three. Let's work in backward order. So number three, it's positive, so the electric field will be pointing to the right. So I'll give that an E3, okay? This is negative, so we know it points toward Q, right? So that's going to be a left-handed force, so this is E2. And then how about this Q? We know it points away, right? So this is going to be pointing to the right. So it looks like it's going to be another vector here. I know I'm running out of space, but another vector down here, and that's going to be E1. So it looks like it may, right? It all depends on the magnitude, but at least we don't have them all pointing in the same direction, because if they all point in the same direction, we wouldn't have to do any calculation. We know that there's no way that things are going to cancel, all right? So now on here, uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to start plugging in then the values here, right, according to their appropriate sign. So it's E1 plus then E3, because they're both pointing to the right, then minus E2, because it's pointing to the left, and that has to equal 0. Right, so let's pull out a common K between these, right, and we're going to expand on the formulas here. So this is basically going to be K multiplied by Q1, okay, so this is going to be Q1. What is Q1? I call it 1 is just Q, so that's, again, 1 microcoulomb, so 1 times 10 to the minus 6 microcoulombs, all divided by, now what's the distance? Well, the distance from Q1 all the way to this point of interest over here is going to be 0 0.08 plus this unknown value, so write it in. So 0 0.08 plus the unknown x squared, don't forget to square it, plus then how about now for 3? How about now for this? Well, what's the charge? It's going to be... Uh, just Q, so it's again 1 times 10 to the minus 6, all divided now by, what's the distance between Q3 and the point of interest? Well, that's X, so now that's just X squared, minus now E2, right? So that's the uh, electric field being produced by 2. So now what's that distance, right? So here, we would want to know this particular distance, right? So what's that? That's 1, 2, 3 centimeters, right? So that's going to be 0 0.03 plus then some unknown x value, just like we did the first case, okay? And that whole thing will be squared, and that's going to be 2 times 1, which is going to be 2 times 10 to the minus 6 coulombs. All equal to 0, right? Okay, so what basically happens with the k? The k can go bye-bye, right? So we can cancel that. Now our whole goal is to solve this, oh my god, solve this thing for, <laughs> solve this thing for x. Um... Right. How shall I do this? Hmm. This is this is gonna get a little, 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 just a teeny bit nuts. I know what I'm gonna do. My friend is Wolfram Alpha. I'll be right back. So after plugging it into Wolfram Alpha, we realize that x will equal point one nine six, and that's in terms of meters. All right. Just reject the negative answers. All I gotta do is. Plug that on in, okay? I, you're not going to have to do this calculation in class. There's no, there's absolutely no way. So um, anyway, that's the value. So that's x. Now it says uh, at what position to the right of 11 centimeters is the total electric field zero? So this actually is the answer, right? Uh, nine uh, point one nine one nine six meters, or in other words, if you want in centimeters, 19.6 centimeters to the right, will it equal zero? Guys, thanks for tuning in. Please remember to help us out and subscribe if this channel helped you out at all. Hit that like button, all right? It really definitely uh, gives us a lot, of, uh, a lot of help there with the YouTube algorithm. And uh, we really appreciate it, all right? Thank you, guys.